Mo, welcome back to TNT. Lovely to see you. How, how are things with you? All good. All good. Back to England. Good. Uh, I wanted to start by asking about your most recent fight. How It's been a couple of weeks now since the Alex Perez fight. How do you look back on that? Look back. I'm happy with my victory, but I'm not happy with my performance. I know I could have done better. And, um, it's a bit angry that it didn't work out how I wanted to work out, you know. And is there anything you've picked out specifically in your analysis, you know, why why you didn't get the performance you wanted? You know, I, I was sick, like, um, I was sick, but it's it's not like something, excuse I want to keep keep talking about, because you will never prove to anyone that nobody cares if you're sick or not, like, I think one of the mistakes I would actu actually have said about it, and um, but I could have, I could have done better. I was doing good in first round striking. Striking wise, I think I could outstrike him. Uh, Alex Perez coach him and said you you stopped him once with the, the knee to the body in the middle of first round, but I didn't see it, you know. Um, and then second round, my my corner told me to wrestle, and that's how it didn't work out, you know. I keep wrestling, I keep wrestling because they told me to wrestle and my game just like just turned around in the middle of the fight which was going good to be honest. But we learn, we learn. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it can you take the positives from it that you it's not your best performance, you weren't feeling good and you still got the win? Yeah. Even on my bad days they can beat me, you know. Like uh, everybody talk about I didn't land so much striking on, on the Pires, but he's an ex-title contender. He should be finishing this young kid who just came to UFC. He's been in the rankings for past like six, seven years. I was fighting in amateurs. At his L level, he should be finishing me. Everybody should talk about the hype train is just got smashed off. Well, what about what happened with this? Everyone like want me to like kill these veterans. When they compete in professional league, professional MMA fight, I was in the refugee center, don't even know it's MMA, the difference between Bellator and UFC. I came ma making big difference in the, the division straight away, just been two years in the in the organization, half six fights, I think one most fight winning streak right now in the UFC flyweight division. And um, I don't know what else they want to see. How does that make you feel when you hear things like that and people talking like that do you does it bother you you know sometimes who actually understands MMA they don't say this but you know like Jake Paul fans they they will never understand and there's no point to explain to them most important my team uh, my sparring partners everybody know what, what I'm up to even the champion I have trained in the past with Pantoja he said himself in the video this is the future superstar in the gym and nobody throws words around like this, especially when you're in the same division and in the, in the, the guys in the rankings. You know, they know I'm the real deal. Talking of Pantoja, obviously his title defense has been announced at UFC 301. What was your reaction when you heard that? My reaction, like, worst that I've ever been. I reacted too quick, like, too soon. I messaged the group chat, where's my team? I said, what what, what they doing? I say, and they said, hey, everything happens for a reason. Everybody like just same message. Everything, every time it ha will happen on the right time. I'm like, what they talking about? I want to fight for the belt. And then they said, maybe it's better for you. Maybe you needed rest after the fight. But I was I was ready straight after fight. Two days after fight, I messaged matchmaker. I said, what's next? Where I'm next, I know that I have Ramadan right now, but I never said no. Even through Ramadan, not putting my best camp, I was ready to fight the champion. Putting my undefeated record, it's not I'm some guy like four in three record in the UFC. I'm six and zero. Oh, I'm putting this on the on the line and put the, putting the risk. And then some Australian guy coming and taking the. Taking them my chance, okay. I'm I'm not blaming 
to blame on on Irsik, very cool guy, very nice and chill guy. I met him in UFC PA. That's his opportunity, that's his dream. Nothing to do with him. Don't get me wrong, I respect him. But I could have been there too. How did those conversations go when you, two days after the, the fight, you message and you say, what's next for me? Was there any talk of you being at 301 or did that not really come up? Didn't really come up, to be honest. They tried to put me on Saudi card. Like, there's a Manchester card. But it's not been announced, so... The uh, matchmaker wasn't happy with my, my like, style. I mean, what style they want to see me, you know, like... I don't know. I don't know. I just have to know. I just, uh, me and my team just decided just go fight anyone, anyone. Just keep winning. They can't delay, but they cannot stop me, you know, to take the belt. They can't delay me. The, we've seen this in the past. They did the same with Habib, if you remember. Similar situation. And eventually I'm going to take this belt. How do you see the, the main event at 301 playing out? Who, who do you think wins that? I think Pantoja will win. I think Isik is still green, still not as experienced as he to fight Pantoja. Pantoja is very, very experienced. He's a dog in this game. He's a bully fighter. He come try to finish you from early seconds, and then when he cannot finish you, he, I think he breaks. I think that's the key I have learned about watching Pantoja. I have trained with him, and I know I have the keys to beat him. But Isik have a really good boxing. But the ground game is, is not there. Especially, especially he's just fought. He's, he's not a wrestler. He doesn't have this condition to work out in for five rounds. One, every, every great striker wants to get taken down. They cannot strike second, third round same as they can in first round. And what about for yourself then? Is, is there any names in particular, people you're looking at while, while this is kind of going on? There, there, there's no names. There's no names to look. Amir Albazi is out till end of the year. Kaikara France is he's got concussion. Mano Kape fighting Matthias Nicolau, so they won't be able to fight probably like till September because they just had a weight cut and I don't know, maybe they fight in August. Um, Schnell just got knocked out. Who else is there? Who else is there? I don't know, division is just because of matchmaking like this. Of co oh, 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 uh, To be honest, I expected they make Brendan Roville against Pantoja round three. They like to do this stuff. But he's zero and two against Pantoja. I would, I, I, would, I, would, I would see this too because I don't understand this matchmaker, what they're doing. And you obviously mentioned one of the matches in the division coming up, Nikolai Cafe. How, how do you see that matchup? Nicolo, uh, like won on, on the papers last time. I think it was a very, very close fight. Uh, I think I think Kape will beat him. Kape had close fight with Pantoja. I think he's up there. Maybe they actually give him a fight for the title if he wins by, by, by finish. So there's, a, there's between me, Royval. Between me, Royval and Kape is like whoever gonna get the title but I'm young these guys like 33 34 I'm 10 years I've got ahead of me you know they can fight do whatever they want I'm just gonna come and get the belt anyway Absolutely. you uh, you also mentioned it before there's lots of talk about a UFC Manchester card if that does happen how much would you love to be on that I'll sign contract with my eyes closed against anyone with obviously now you've got yourself, everything that's going on with you, Tom Aspinall's champion, Leon Edwards. How good is British UFC right now? It's great. Michael Bisping were a champion. Great name or Brad Pickett. He wasn't champion, but I think he's a, he's a people, people champ. And he's done a, a lot for UK MMA, beating just Dimitris Johnson. That's like... That's amazing results. I think sport is growing right now in this country. I think this sport is needed in this country. If you look at um, if you look at the history of MMA, all the champions become from like from Brazil, from Mexico, 
like from Dagestan now, like poor places. UK, rich rich country, but but there's there's the kids outside on the streets who try to find some money. Like people don't see this, you know. Everybody see London, but outside of London, there's some. There, there could be poverty too, you know. Kids on the streets don't know what they're up to in their life. Somebody sold drugs, somebody in a criminal. I think this can be great to to leave the community instead of going to criminal and, and get involved in MMA. Definitely. And um, why do you think we've had such a like? Why is it so good right now? Do you think do, has anything has changed, or you've just kind of as the sport's grown, we've we've got all these superstars. I think sports growing a lot of money involved, a lot of media involved, and people wants to be out there with with the like uh, with the fame and you know like back in 10 years ago even parents wouldn't send kids to the gym like because even I remember my dad was saying this the, the sport a little bit like wild to do Olympic sport that's why he sent me to Olympic uh, wrestling he said Olympic is more prestigious than this this blood dirty sport but now this this sport become actually like is more safer than boxing I would say. So I think I think kids looking up to guys like Lane Edwards, there's um Bra Arnold Arnold Allen. There's some some good guys in UK like Thomas Pinnell and they take take the like uh, as a role model. Do you talk much to Tom, to Leon, like the kind of the other British fighters? Do you guys chat much? I talk a lot with Tom. Andy was my like First BJJ coach. I mean, Tom was, and then Andy were coaching the adults. You know, so good, good, good people, and um, good role, good role models to follow. Did you see the clip of Tom and John Jones bumping into each other at the weekend? Yeah. What did you make of that? I always look at the body uh, mechanics of the person. Um, you know the the thing he put on his shoulder. I think John, aware of his, he's a challenge, is a real challenge at the moment right now to Tom. If he wasn't real challenge, he would hug him back, take a photo, say, kid, all the best, you know, but um, he didn't, he didn't like, he, he's a little bit arrogant, John, I don't know why, with Tom. But I don't know, this fight maybe never happened. You don't think? No. John doesn't look in shape, doesn't look, he trains. I don't know, I don't think this fight ever happened. It'd be a shame. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you yeah. very much. Perfect.